In our gospel reading today, we are shared an intimate moment of Jesus' prayer life. Jesus is praying to the Father for us. He wants us to be one in community, unified as Jesus and the Father are one. He wants to bring us into attunement with each other and with God, a way of relationship that is about mutual love. Jesus prays that the life of his followers will be characterized by the intimate unity of identity with God. He wants his followers, us, to be in a loving community, a love as deep as the love of the Father for the Son. And the mode for us to become a part of this community is Jesus himself. Jesus is the way that we are brought into attunement with each other and with God. Jesus is the way that we become one. I'd like to talk about both of these things with you today. Being in tune with each other in a faith community and two, being in tune with God. Because you see, as Jesus points out, these are not mutually exclusive ideas. Now, I think human beings often appreciate a feeling of attunement, when everything seems to have its place in the system, when life is balanced. You have your place, so does everything else. You can see the big picture and you find a sense of joy and peace in recognizing it. I've experienced this myself many times while on a nature hike or listening to a good piece of music. You know that feeling. Maybe it doesn't happen as often as you like, but I know you've experienced it before. It's a moment of ecstasy, where the world just seems to make sense. A moment when God breaks through. And this type of attunement, too, can happen in community, not just on a nature hike or when you've got your headphones on. In church here, I hope you get that feeling of attunement, a feeling of unity or oneness with each other. You know that's one of our goals in the church, for you to experience this, because Jesus told us he wants it for us. And we are quite direct in pursuing this lofty goal. One of the ways we do it here, one of the ways we try and make sure that you feel a part of something bigger than yourself is with singing the hymns and psalms. Attunement is the reason why we begin in quiet reflection as a community listening to a centering prelude. Unlike so much of life, here in this place, you aren't alone in what you're doing. All of us for a moment are doing the same thing, opening ourselves up to God's action in our lives. It is God who prepares our hearts and minds for worship. And as one, we let God in. Welcoming God is our purpose for being together, despite the variety of backgrounds from which we have come today. And then it continues more and more. As one voice, we lift our songs of praise directed toward God. Some of us with musical gifts, others like me hiding my voice in the background. But the beauty of it all is that together, we genuinely raise a joyful noise for our praise of God in ways that we could never do on our own. With the word that we sing, we are also even sharing in the heavenly choir, lending our voices to the choir of angels who sing around God's throne 24-7. Yes, whether you saw it this way or not before, we begin our worship by coming together in ways that are a little strange for this world. In ways of peace and love and unity that you can't find in many places these days. Just think of the psalm we read or can't together. Where else have you ever done that? Here, it's just another one of those ways that the church practices bringing us into unison, 
Voices raised together, ready ever more to continue in this new way where we aren't alone anymore. I mean, just think about the ways that we are actually one as we are here in worship on Sunday mornings. For an hour, we set down our phones, we stop reading different things, and we focus together on Holy Scripture. We all hear the same message shared of how God is reaching into our lives and bringing us into a community of love and a relationship with God that will last even beyond the bounds of time and space. And it's not a coincidence that when you come up to share in Holy Communion, we share one loaf of bread and share in one cup of wine. It's Jesus' body and blood in which we share. Together we are becoming one. He has brought us here to be one with each other and with him. In church, everything we do is about that unity he wants for us. That oneness with each other and with God that he talks about in the gospel today. As Christians, our spiritual goal is to be one with God. We want to know God's ways. We want to hear and understand when God speaks to us. We want the most intimate relationship with God that we can imagine. We know that God knows us in ways that we can hardly imagine, and we want to know God that way too. We want to be one with God, and Jesus tells us today that we are through him. He is the answer to our spiritual nakedness. He is the one who dresses us in robes of glory, and he does it by becoming a part of us. Jesus dresses us in himself. Jesus wants to be one with you in ways that we have only begun to appreciate. He wants us to be one with the Father just as he is one with the Father. He wants us to live in a community of love like he lives in a community of love. It is Jesus who invites us in. It is Jesus who sends his Holy Spirit into us, transforming us from our selfish, fleshy selves to the people that God made us to be. And yes, it does mean giving up that ego that wants everything for itself. But so too, what replaces that ego is the Holy Spirit herself, who becomes a part of you, who molds you and makes you more than you could ever be by yourself. In any relationship, we need to allow space for the other. We need to offer them a part of our hearts and minds, a part of our life itself. And our relationship with God is not so different. The difference, though, is that God doesn't just want a piece of you. God wants the whole thing. God wants to take you over and guide you to fields of pasture that you've been running away from your whole life. God wants to take the reins and make you stop running away from the people that God wants in your life. God wants to use you and love you and cherish you. The thing is, too often I think we don't want to be that vulnerable, even for God. We think we've got a handle on this whole life thing too often, maybe. Only seeking God when we've finally messed it up bad enough to finally admit it. But as Christians, we are called always to surrender to the love of God in Jesus Christ. We are called to offer our entire selves as a sacrifice to our Lord. We are called to set ourselves aside so that the Christ that wants to live inside of us 
can have the space needed to do so. And yes, this may be scary for some people to just let this happen. But we are assured today that the only result will be love. The love of God and community. It's that feeling of attunement or oneness that we actually cherish in life and don't ever seem to get enough of. And well, God wants more of that for us. Letting ourselves go. Releasing our own will. And letting God take over is something that is possible in this life. And it's a spiritual way of life that Jesus talks about in the Gospels. And so as a community, in this safe space together, I'd like to invite you to do just this. Now, some of you might know this practice as meditation, though slightly different than Buddhist or Hindu practices. Jewish people call it davening, a meditation with prayer, and we might in the church just call it prayer, but no matter what you call it, what I am inviting you to experience now is a letting go of yourself and allowing yourself to be infiltrated by God. God filling in the places that you release control of. This is about being one with God and each other. A place where we don't let ourselves go often enough, I don't think. So here is how it, here is how it goes. And for those of you who are dreading this, I promise it will only last a minute. I want you to close your eyes. Breathe deeply and slowly. Concentrate on your breath. Get comfortable. Feel your body getting comfortable. Empty your thoughts. Allow space for God and breathe. And now I've shared this with a few people here before. Keep your eyes closed and as you breathe in Silently say the word Mara. And as you exhale, Natha. Mara. Natha. Mara. Natha. Mara. Natha. Maranatha is a word in Jesus' native language which means Lord come or the Lord is coming or the Lord has come or maybe all of these things at once Mara Natha Mara Natha Lord come Lord, come. Keep going. As your brain wanders, 
naturally off to do what it wants, trying to keep you for itself. I remind you to bring yourself back to the centering prayer. Mera, Natha. Don't scold yourself for not giving God the space inside. But instead offer yourself grace and forgiveness. That's the Jesus part of this experience. Offering you grace as you open up to God's presence within you. Mara Natha Lord Jesus you have found us deep down within ourselves. You have come into our community and made us one with you and the Father. Your Holy Spirit rests within us now. You have made us one with each other in water and word, in bread and wine. Like the cross, your love for us is deep and broad. And you have come to offer us a new way of life in you, in you that goes beyond what this world can offer. Lord Jesus, we are yours. We belong to you. Take us into your loving arms. Mara Natha Mara Natha You may open your eyes and we continue our worship now in an even deeper attunement to one with God and each other raising our voices together once again as we sing our hymn of the day we are one because Jesus has made us one. Amen. <laughs>